The final step to being ready in three is to listen for information. You can trust that our public officials have plans in place for these types of situations and are monitoring our safety 24-7. No matter what situation occurs or where it takes place in the state of Missouri, you can rest assured that the state is ready and waiting at all times. The DHSS Department Situation Room is the central location for monitoring and reporting potential problems 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All local public health agencies, doctors, hospitals, and law enforcement know to call the emergency hotline anytime if they suspect there is a public health emergency or bioterrorism event. This computer system tracks the emergency rooms and hospitals all across the state. And folks here are constantly monitoring many different things, ready to determine when they have an emergency on their hands. Should a crisis arise, Missouri's Department of Health and Senior Services works with the FBI, Homeland Security, the State Emergency Management Agency, local police, and others, including the governor, to determine the best response. The state of Missouri has plans in place for all types of crises, and state officials have conducted many practice drills for everything from chemical spills to lots of people getting sick and needing medicine at one time. But no matter what type of emergency, a few things stay the same. The experts here always work with state and local law enforcement and also notify TV, radio stations, and newspapers. First, CSR to OPI, over. That's why it's important for everyone to listen for instructions. It's good to know that local, state, and federal agencies have plans to protect and inform us all. But it is up to you to listen and respond. Equally important is your willingness to listen to the people in your care. Unfamiliar places, first responders, and activity that is not routine may be a little scary. So closely monitor their behavior during an emergency and during practice drills. And watch for the following signs of stress. You do want to look for depression. You do want to look for people with a vacant gaze. You want to look for people who are getting, you know, their respiratory rate is increasing. You want to look for people who are looking thirsty, their mouths looking dry, they're not able to speak, they're getting tearful. You know, those are normal reactions that can happen to a panic situation or a disaster. You want to anticipate that this is going to happen and make sure that you're making you know, everyone comfortable, secure, let them know that you're there for them and that you know we're going to be doing a certain thing and repeatedly telling them this is where we're going we're going to get in the bus okay there's uh, there's been a little trouble i think the important thing is reassuring people letting them know what's happening and then you know keeping the familiarity of the environment intact many a times we just assume that someone's got dementia or they've got cognitive impairment they can't understand anything that that's happening and you know, fortunately, they do understand what's happening and not all faculties of an individual are lost just because they have dementia. So we need to let them know what we're doing. Just you know, giving them hugs and touching them, that's important because it's amazing how contact works, letting them know you're there, just holding their hand. They might not be able to understand your words, but how you touch them makes a difference. Family and friends will be the best source of information on their loved one's likely reaction to a crisis. So again, it's important to discuss emergency preparedness with them. And remember, the people in your care will take their lead from you and your staff. So if you remain calm, so will they. Thinking and planning ahead is the best line of defense for any emergency. Take an active role in the safety of the people in your care by creating a plan, preparing a kit, and listening for information. And once you do, be sure to check your plan and your kit quarterly, and keep a log every time you do, so you'll know when to check it again. It's also important for you to encourage families on your staff to create their own family emergency plans. DHSS will be happy to send you copies of the Missouri Family Safety Guide and Family Plan to share with them. After all, the more prepared they are, the smoother things will go during a crisis at your facility. 
Meet with your neighbors to determine how you could assist each other in an emergency. And start developing personal relationships with local emergency officials, law enforcement, and public works personnel. These are the people who will likely respond to an emergency at or near your facility, and they can help you determine possible hazards or threats in your area. Communication is key to crisis control, before, during, and after a disaster. So start immediately by sharing your plans with staff and families, too. In fact, showing that you are prepared will likely make you a more marketable provider. It will certainly decrease your recovery time should an actual disaster strike. But most importantly, it can save lives. So remember to stay alert because you can't predict when or where an emergency will happen but you can be ready in three.